So, you've gotten yourself a micro bit, you've worked through all the suggested experiments, and are now wondering what to do. Well, I thought, why not try a robot? Now, this is the Pololu Zumo chassis kit, to which I've added an L293D motor driver, ultrasound sensors, and the brains is an 80 tiny 85 now this is kind of small to fit all of this, but just looking at the internet, you'll see that larger chassis kits can be quite considerable in price. Now I picked this one up at Pimaroni during one of their um, Christmas sales at a discount. Can we get away with something cheaper? So what do we need for a robot? We need a drive system, wheels, motors, and a gearbox a battery box, some form of sensing the environment, motor drivers, and a prototyping area. Here's what I'll be using to create the microbit robot. The battery pack comes from indoor Christmas lights from Primark. These wooden pieces come from a wooden building set and a wooden game set available at the works. This corner bracket and epoxy resin from Pound World, an assortment of nuts and bolts from Asda, a caster from Robert Dias, and in order to create the H bridges that will drive the motors, uh, I'll be using these bipolar junction transistors and various resistors that my dad had salvaged decades ago from various pieces of electronic equipment. To drive our microbit robot, I'll be using these two Solar 300 DC motors, which you can pick up on AliExpress for a couple of dollars. The gearbox and wheel were donated from the local hack space. I'm not sure whether you can still get these. I haven't been able to find a link for them on AliExpress, eBay, or Banggood. And here it is fully assembled. It is literally held together by rubber bands. Here are the two hand-soldered H-bridges. As you can see, I had to parallel up the 10K resistors in order to bring them down to 3 kilo ohm. Let's test my homemade H-bridges. Everything seems to be working. Let's hook it up to the microbit. Our microbit robot needs a way to avoid obstacles and hazards. So I'm going to wire up this infrared proximity sensor. Now this is a infrared light emitting diode with a sensor. And it's hooked up to an LM358P, a dual op amp. So one of the op amps is being used as a voltage comparator so that whenever ref reflected infrared light is sensed, the output from the comparator goes high. Now that is going to be wired up to one of the general purpose input output pins on the microbit. Both proximity sensors are now wired up to the BBC microbit. I've uploaded a program into the microbit to show a heart when both of the sensors are blocked. If I remove one hand, it then shows a left arrow, and it's actually programmed to turn the motors in a different direction than when both are blocked. Um, it's not doing that now because I have the power to the motors turned off. It moves the it would move into a different direction when. I remove my other hand as you can see. Now I've switched to powering the whole system from a mobile phone battery and a USB boost converter because the these two triple A's are just not sufficient to power both the micro bit and show the LEDs responding to the proximity sensors being blocked. So let's try it out now.
Well, you certainly get what you pay for.